Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and today we're taking a look at the brightest OLED gaming monitor that you can buy right now. This is the ASUS ROG PG27AQDM, which is a 27-inch OLED monitor that supports up to 240Hz, has a VRR and 1000 nits peak brightness. So on paper, this ticks a lot of boxes for gaming, but what is it actually like to use, and is it worth buying? Well today I'm going to get this unboxed and then talk about the specs and the features, but I will also compare a few of these points against the LG version, which is what this monitor is actually based on, and that should give you a good idea of which one is better overall. Any questions you have just drop those below and I will try to answer those for you. But let's get this opened up and see what we get inside the box. Okay so first up we've got some ROG stickers, and a couple of manuals here which we might read later. Nobody ever reads these. This pouch contains all of the cables that you might need for your setup. This includes an HDMI cable, a display port and a USB 3.2 cable. And here's the power adapter and power cord which has some nice ASUS branding on. And then here we have the stand and this comes in three parts and it is ridiculously easy to put together. And underneath all of this is the monitor but before we take this out of the box let's fit the stand. So on my desk I'm using the Secret Lab Magnus Arm, which will fit this monitor as it is VESA compatible. But for the purpose of this video I will be using the ROG stand so you can see what it looks like in the setup as well as how to install it. So it comes in three parts, we've got the feet which are made from metal and have this nice flat grey look to it. Then we have the rear column which is made from plastic and that connects directly to the monitor. And this part is if you'd rather use a VESA bracket or arm instead. This goes directly onto the back of the monitor with a simple quick release function. And this little piece lets you shine an ROG logo onto your desk. Although this can be turned off in the settings and I will show more of this later. So the first thing we need to do is fit the arm to the monitor. And that just clicks into place. Then we need to attach the feet to that using a single screw at the bottom. And finally we have the end cap which not only tidies up the stand but it also adds some LED lighting to the bottom. And here it is, the ASUS ROG PG27AQDM, that is one hell of a mouthful. But if you are after a monitor that looks like a gaming monitor, this is definitely it. I think ROG have done a pretty decent job of creating that gaming vibe that still looks clean rather than tacky, especially the rear design. Firstly, the screen is incredibly thin, like I don't think we can get any thinner than this in the future. It's also got a matte black finish to the rear. Then in the center we have a chunky part which is what houses all of the internals. The left side is matte with the Republic of Gamers logo, and on the right side it's almost glossy with this matrix style print that they've added. And this huge ROG logo on the right looks really nice, and it also doubles up as an LED backlight. And you can have any color you'd like including solid, strobe or cycling through the colors, or if you'd rather you can switch it off completely. Then there's some other small LED lighting on the stand like the swift lettering and on the base. And as for the dimensions and weight, well I've put these on screen now along with a few others you might not find online. Then we have the front and this monitor just looks awesome. Once again we have the ultra thin bezels and frame, although it's not quite as thin as the website portrays, but it's still very thin. Across the bottom there's a chunky notch and that has the ROG logo on, and behind that are the controls for the screen. There's the power button which is also the OK button in the middle, as well as the left and the right buttons next to that. As for the stand, well it's made from plastic and metal and feels really sturdy and secure on the desk. You can tilt it, swivel it side to side, and pivot it horizontally or vertically, as well as having a height adjustment between 0 and 110mm, so plenty of movement to get it just right on the desk. Now as mentioned I'd normally use my monitor arm in my setup, so all I need to do is fit the VESA adapter instead and that will work fine with it. And you know what, I think it looks even better when it's mounted on an arm. I mean the provided stand is fine and it's probably one of the best that they've designed, but this looks even cleaner on here. Right let's talk about the screen. So this is a 27 inch OLED panel with a 2560 by 1440 resolution. It also has 240Hz and a 0.03 millisecond response time. So it ticks most of the boxes when it comes to gaming, but it is lacking a few depending on what you're planning to use it for. So first up, this is a 1440p screen rather than 4K, but that's not a bad thing as even at 1440p the quality of the picture is great on a monitor this size. It's sharp and detailed and thanks to the 99% DCI-P3 colour gamut, everything looks vibrant and as colourful as you would expect. Now this is an OLED panel so we do get those incredible black and contrast levels and even though this does have an anti-glare coating, the black levels are not really compromised as you might expect. Sure a glossy screen will give us more depth, but this is the best anti-glare coating that I've seen on an OLED screen. 
This means you won't see reflections in the panel and it makes watching it during the day so much easier. Of course, if you shine a light on it or you place it near a window, you're still going to see some glare, but it does a great job of diffusing it. I know most of you will say OLED should always be glossy and for a TV I would agree, but for most gaming setups where monitors are often have a matte or anti-glare finish, this is absolutely fine. And the fact that this monitor has a custom heatsink, something that the LG equivalent doesn't have, means the brightness levels have been massively improved. This monitor can output up to 1000 nits peak brightness, which is around 350 more than the same panel found in the LG OLED, and that is huge. Now having used the two, the extra brightness is definitely noticeable. Not as much as you might think, but 20 to 30% brighter overall in SDR and HDR. This means viewing it during the day or in a bright room is great, and at no point do I feel it's lacking any brightness. The highlights look well balanced and don't look blown out or overexposed. The contrast looks great as well, with a 1.5 million to 1 contrast ratio, the highlights and the shadows just look incredible, and over the last week I've been playing a few different games to test out the dark levels and contrast, and I have been really impressed with the overall image quality. Typically I play in HDR as that's where the brightness and the picture quality are at its best, but SDR content looks great as well. Of course it's not going to get as bright as HDR, and you can see the difference when flicking between the two. Now if you're hooking this up to a PC, you can of course take advantage of that full 240Hz at 1440p, and this thing is an absolute beast. Like this is the perfect spec for most PC gamers. It's smooth, has decent motion handling, and the response time of just 0.03 milliseconds will be noticeable. Then we have an input lag of 4.5 milliseconds at 240Hz, and 7.7 .7 milliseconds at 120 So this is quick. That means games where an instant response is important, like Apex Legends or Warzone, will be ideal on a monitor like this. I even played some extra fight last week, which was awesome. I'm really looking forward to playing more of this when it fully launches. And as for the size of the monitor, I actually think the 27 inch is a great size. Having used some 27, 32 and 42 inch monitors over the last few months, I think the 27 and 32 just hits the sweet spot. Now if you're playing on a console like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, you will of course be limited to 120Hz at 1440p. The HDMI ports are also limited to HDMI 2.0 rather than 2.1, which is surprising as the LG does include 2.1, but it's not a huge issue as you're not getting that 4K resolution anyway. So for gaming, this is brilliant, but what's it like for productivity? Well, technically it works. I mean, you've got the two HDMI ports and a DisplayPort 1.4, so you can of course use those. There's no USB-C port, but that's not an issue if you've got one of these cables. This is a USB-C to DisplayPort. Just plug one end into your laptop or your PC and the other one into the monitor. As you can see in the settings, we're still able to get the full resolution and refresh rate. It's smooth and looks good, but there's one issue that I found, and that's to do with the way text is displayed. Now I've reviewed a lot of monitors and TVs on the channel, and most of the time I would have no problem in recommending a gaming monitor for dual purpose, and that's for gaming and work, but not this time. The text looks blurry and has some slight fringing if you look really closely. It's hard to capture, but it is definitely there and scaling the screen means it actually gets worse as the resolution is reduced, so using it for writing documents becomes way too difficult to read. If I'm being completely honest, I would not be happy using this for work, but for gaming and text in the games is absolutely fine. So I mentioned earlier about the anti-glare coating. Well, the advantage to this is you're not going to see yourself or your windows or lights behind you in your room, but you are going to see some slight glare on your screen if you do place this too close to a window or too close to a light source. So for example, if I had a lamp or a window shining straight onto the monitor, you're going to have a hard time seeing it. But to be honest, you just need to control the lighting in your room as you would with any screen. But check out these viewing angles. I know most of us do watch our screen straight on while sitting at a desk, but being able to see the screen from virtually any angle is still pretty impressive. Let's talk burning. It's always something worth talking about when we're looking at an OLED screen. So yes, there is a risk of burning when using a monitor like this for productivity, but for general gaming, I don't really think it's something to worry about. But there are some inbuilt OLED care settings in the menus, things like pixel cleaning, pixel shift, and the screensaver. There's even a logo brightness where you can dim the logos on your screen. And although this does come with a warranty, burn-in is not covered, so that's definitely something worth considering. A look at the ports, which we've briefly covered already. We have a display port 1.4, two HDMI 2.0 ports, an earphone jack, and three USB ports via the USB hub. There isn't any cable management trunking built in as such, but there is a cutout on the rear column that helps you keep your cables in place. All you need to do is feed the cables through the hole before plugging them in. And a quick look at the menus and the UI. 
So normally there would be a button on the bottom that you click, but on this model it's actually behind the ROG logo. As for the menu, well you can adjust things like the picture settings and profiles, as well as turning various settings on and off including VRR and the FreeSync Premium. You can also enable an FPS counter to see what your games are running at, as well as a crosshair on screen. Even the LEDs on the rear can be changed or switched off entirely, and you can control the bottom LED and the rear LED separately. So for me, I would turn off the bottom LED but leave the rear one on. So there is plenty to do on here to get it set up just the way that you need it, although some settings are greyed out and can only be changed via PC. Overall, I think the ASUS ROG monitor is a great buy. If you're looking for the brightest 27 inch OLED for gaming and you're not too bothered about 4K, this is definitely the one. It's also got 240Hz, a VRR and a pretty nice design. ASUS have taken the already great monitor, the LG 27GR95QE, and added the increased brightness and heatsink, but they have removed HDMI 2.1 and the remote control. Ultimately it comes down to which one that you like the look of, and if you'd like the extra punch that you get from the increased brightness. It is a really tough choice which one I would pick out of the two, as they are pretty much the same. But if I had to choose one, I would probably go for the LG, just for the slimmer chin across the bottom, the remote control and the UI. I really like the game optimised mode that we get on the LG monitors. But for the picture quality and brightness alone, the ASUS is slightly better overall. But let me know which one you would go for. Would you go for the LG or the ASUS and why? I'm always interested in hearing what you think of these monitors. Also, when are we going to get a 27 or 32 inch 4K OLED? That is the one I need on my desk. Now drop an OLED monitor in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my full desk tour video next, as it covers everything from the desk to the chair, the monitor arm and all of the accessories. Well, thank you for watching. Please like, sub and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.